has to be very, very careful. One and only one move that can make sense in this position and that is giving black a good game is e5. And this is a very interesting move. What black wants to do here is to develop knight f6 and castle kingside when white does not have this attack and black has pieces developing easily. Why do we play e5 here? Because e5 move later is not as good because knight is going to take. So we play it right away. But this is a pawn sacrifice because white can simply take ampersand and white will have an extra pawn. But now it's a different strategical idea for black. Black just gets way ahead in development after playing knight c6 pawn takes bishop takes d7 and blacks get black gets very strong position for for a deficit of one pawn for instance knight f3 knight f6 black's plan is to play queen e7 and the castle long side, followed by rook e8. You can explore it by yourself, and you will see that black gets much more compensation for a pawn that you can get in most of the gambit continuations. This position is strongly recommended by me. So once more, we go back to e5 move. Queen a4, e5. As we said, pawn takes ampersand, followed by knight c6, and then we want to retake this pawn. So if white wants to keep an extra pawn, they have to take, and after bishop takes d7, black's next three programmed moves are knight f6, queen e7, and castling alongside, with a great position for black. Now, we're going to go move by move what happens if white does not take ampersand. And white plays, suppose, knight f3. Then we go e4. Remember what we said before, we will try to keep position as close as possible. Bishop g5, queen b6. Knight d2. Now all we have to do is to play d6 and develop our pieces here. But d6 is, as you see now, it's illegal move. So what we can do, we can play queen a6 to kick the queen out of here. And if queen goes back or exchanges, we will follow by d6 and maybe h6 to kick the bishop first, then d6, and then we have easy development, 97 and 95. Black has very comfortable position here. So if white does not want to take ampersand and win a pawn, then black's plan is to play knight f6, then castle, and the first chance they have to play d6, and continue development, having very good center and um, an easy development of a pieces. But important po point here is to see that if we have played already e5 and d6, and we have this pawn formation, then castling on a king side is not dangerous for black. Because even if white develops this bishop on h6, white has no way of bringing his pieces to attack black's king here because you have, we have very strong center here. And there is no way black can access, white can access black's king. So this position 
is very good. You can try it out, and I strongly recommend it. Another opportunity for white to play this position is to play simply e3, knight f3, and develop pieces like bishop d3, but not to lock this bishop on c1. So what we mean by that is what if white goes knight f3, we go queen a5, now white goes queen c2, knight f6, and now white can play bishop f4, or even bishop g5. Well, let's suppose it was bishop f4, d6, and now it plays e3. We have to play the same knight d7 move, or we can go knight e4. I recommend knight e4, attacking c3 pawn, and after white defends it to go knight d7, and as soon as the bishop is developed on d3, we support our knight with knight f6, and then we go bishop d7, and now we're going to see the negative side of bishop on f4. Why, why is it, ne what is the negative side? that black is trying to cast alongside, and then eventually black is going to play g5 with the tempo and conducting attack on king's side. You can try it. It's very good for black. But those positions, you have to get hang of them by playing them more and more often. And play. You can play it against some... Uh, software, computer programs, or you can play it against your friends in tournaments or anywhere. So this position is also very um, good for black. Now let's, now we're going to try and see brand new pawn structure, which we have not seen yet in this chapter. Here, this is the new pawn structure. We will see what happens if, in this position, uh, white plays bishop f4 or bishop g5. Can we go knight f6? This is another pawn structure that is good for uh, black. Queen c2, well actually the way it should be played, black goes queen a5 first. Queen c2, knight f6. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Now black's plan is to go d6, knight d7, and knight e5. White has a chance to play e4 in this position, an open center. But the opening center, now as we can see, does not favor white because we take, queen takes with a check, and now we go king f7, very safe position for king, better maybe than after canceling. Now c3 pawn is still hanging and also threatening winning the queen. Now and after queen c2, we go d6, Bishop d3, knight d7, and after knight f3, even knight e5, or even knight b6, and bishop g4, or, or even check first. And after bishop e2, we can go knight b6, or knight e5, and black has very comfortable development. We did not have to castle by making like this, by playing like castle immediately. This is just as well, king f7 move in, in this variation is just as well as castling, because it's castling by hand. It does not cost black any extra time by playing here and here, because white did play queen takes e4 check and then went back.
So we can conclude for, I spend many, many hours, maybe hundreds of hours, analyzing this position, and I honestly don't see clear way for uh, white to get an advantage. What can white try, though? White can try also, um, excuse me, this, f3, try to make e4 and take center, control in the center without sacrificing any point. So we go queen a5, queen c2, d6, and after e4, we take and we get a familiar to us position. So what we said actually on this uh, lecture is that in this, this is the critical position that we can get. Now here, as I said before, white can avoid all this opening by playing e4. But that will allow us some other systems for black which will not be possible if white plays immediate knight c3. Also, white can avoid it by playing knight f3. Then black has different, each one of them, each different continuation. Each one of them represent different chapter. We cannot cover all of, all of the chapters now in this lecture. But what we can do, we can, we did, and we did do, we cover the main move, which is knight c3, and we go c5, and we cover what we would do, we do on anything white will play now, such as main move d5, dc, e3, and knight f3. In all those cases, black has very comfortable position. Now, I recommend this opening, well, you may not have a good feel for it, and you, don't, you may not be very uh, enthusiastic to play it now, but believe me, and I guarantee you, you develop your appetite during the dinner. Play it, and you will definitely like it. And you will have some difficult moments in this opening, but you will, if you follow uh, this uh, basic strategical ideas which I explained it to you, which I explained to you, you can have yourself, you can get yourself very interesting company. Or as far as other moves like knight f3 and e4, we will definitely cover them in uh, different chapters and in different videos. But for now, we covered knight c3, and it does look good to me, and I played on very high, in the highest level. And I have a couple of students, by the way, that played that on much lower level. They just win game after game in the opening. So I would recommend what, if you are a player from 1,000 to 3,000 rated, it's good for you. Otherwise, you may try different openings. Thank you very much, and see you next time. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending, and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right, and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.